Hello there friends, I'm Kendra Winchester, welcome back to my channel. So as you know, I really love new books, and I don't mean getting new books, though I, I, I do love getting new books, but I mean new book releases. I get really excited for the new books that are coming out. I spend a lot of time researching books and trying to figure out what books that I would want to read, and there are a lot of them. But I've narrowed it down to 10. There will be some additional ones down in the show notes that are like honorable mentions, but these are the ones that I am really, really, really looking forward to. And I know this is a little late, so I'm going to include books also that have already come out on August 1st. But still, all the books, right? All the books. A book that came out on August 1st is See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt, and in the US this is out from Atlantic Monthly Press. There we go. This is about the Lizzie Borden, um, not trial per se, but about the event. And so the days leading up to and the days after um, when Lizzie Borden supposedly killed her parents. She was eventually acquitted, we all know that, but this really looks at her family life and what circumstances she was under and it really a good character study on the psychology behind these characters. Um, I've already started it and I really love where she's going with it. It's, dare I say, a lot of fun. I'm not sure that's the right term, but it, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. So if you haven't already, definitely pick this one up. Now the next book I want to talk about is Sour Heart by Jenny Zhang. And this is out from Lenny, which is Lena Dunham's imprint. Now a lot of celebrities get imprints and you're like, what? Why are you doing that? And then you never hear about it again. But this one, I think, I think Lena Dunham's actually going to do a good job with it. This book sounds fantastic. It's a short story collection uh, set, I believe, mostly in New York. And it has... Um, themes of like immigration and trying to make your way in the world and just it just sounds amazing right up my alley and I really want to get my hands on it have not yet working on it put it on your list go find it I don't know it's like a treasure lost somewhere that you have to go find but yeah really looking forward to that one the other, next book I want to talk about is Motherist by Kristen Iskandrian I think that's how you say that and then this is from 12 Books, which is a division of Hachette, and I, I think they do 12 books a year. I think that might be it, yeah. So this book is about a woman named Agnes, who is really screwing up at life right now. It's the 1990s, she doesn't really know what she's doing, and then she discovers she's pregnant, and she has to find help, and she has to go get help from her mother. And they don't have the greatest relationship, so it really looks at the mother-daughter relationship, uh, growing up, uh, adulting, and, and just getting your stuff together. Because apparently that's what she needs to do. So I'm really looking forward to the reading this book because I think character study would be great. I guess that's the theme right now, but this is a bit different than see what I've done. Just a little bit. One of my most anticipated books of August there are several, okay, I will admit it. But in the top, top four maybe, is um, is A Kind of Freedom by Margaret Wilkinson Sexton. And this is about a Creole, Creole woman named Evelyn living in New Orleans at around uh, World War II. And she falls in love with, an, she's up of, she's of the upper echelon, there we go, of um, black society. But she falls in love with this no-name guy and has to figure out if she's willing to give up everything to marry him. We also jump forward to, I believe, the 1980s when her daughter Jackie has been abandoned by her guy and has to deal with, like, has to life again. So I've really read some amazing things about this book and it just seems so different. And I'm always here for a book of the South now. Thank you, Autumn. Um, and I think it's just going to be so interesting. So that is definitely high on my list and hopefully you will also put on yours and give this author some love because it definitely deserves it. The next book I want to talk about is Misfortune of Miriam Palm, and this is from Knopf, and this is by Emily Culleton. I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly, so please, booktube, help me out here. That would be great. Uh, this book is about a woman who doesn't consider herself as an embezzler. Um, you know, she kind of just takes money, you know, and that's how she paid for vacations. She embezzled over $180,000, and it's kind of like... A story about this anti-hero criminal type person and it looks really interesting and I've seen it on several lists I think it'll be really cool I don't know I really like reading about crooks and villains it's just it's just a thing I have embraced it 
So on August 15th, we have Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi, and this is out from Riverhead, and this is a retelling of Antigone, but it's through, I believe, two Muslim families, I think. So I love Antigone. I love Greek tragedy plays, like nobody's business. I saw Antigone my freshman year of college, and I just fell in love. I had never heard of anything like that before, and then we started reading them in college, and we ended up reading... Uh, I took this classics class, and we ended up reading a ton of them. And we read Medea is also another favorite. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what's wrong with my brain, but um, I do love them. And so when I read this, I was like, yes, this is this is wonderful. And it was long listed for the Man Booker, so this is perfect. And that cover for the U.S. edition, oh my goodness, I just want to hang it on my wall. Sign me up. Let's go. Let's just do this. So. You have heard of this, but um, we talk about this a lot. But The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin is coming out in August. Oh my goodness. Like, I can't tell you anything about this book because that will spoil it. Um, but it is finally coming out, and Orbit grace graciously sent me an early copy. And I still haven't read it yet, and I feel so horrible on the inside. But oh my goodness, the Broken Earth trilogy is ending, and I read the first two like a few months ago, right? So it wasn't that long ago, and I did not have to wait very long. But oh my goodness, I cannot find, cannot wait to find out what happens. It ended on a cliffhanger. There are so many twists and turns in this series, but not in a mystery thriller way, but just in a well-crafted way. I really love what N.K. Jemisin does with fantasy and everything that she does. She doesn't do huge innovative things with like world building per se. Like we have seen similar things. Like it's cool and I think it's interesting, but what she does is the quality, I think, of her stuff just really, really outshines a lot of fantasy books that I've read. And I love fantasy, so I'm not knocking it. I love her. I think she's such, uh, so, so wonderful. Yes, so I, I could gush forever about this book, so I'm just gonna cut myself off, like, right now, and say yes. My goodness. So I love the Jacobi series by William Ritter. This is from Algonquin Young Readers, and the last one called The Dire King is coming out in the Jacobi Quartet. I own the first three, love the first three, I think they're wonderful. They're set in America, in turn of the century, um, what is it, Boston? I don't know. It might be Boston, it might not be Boston, I don't remember, honestly, I just, I just don't. So it is kind of like a Sherlock Holmes in America, but with actual werewolves and dragons and things. It's really cool. Like, I cannot wait to read the last one. The covers are gorgeous. Everything about this is amazing. They're just so much fun and enjoyable, and whenever, it's one of those books that when I'm stressed, I just turn on and it's perfect. Like, I love the audiobooks. It's what I've done all the way through. Love them. Love them. That is all. Go read that likewise. Also on August 22nd is uh, Stay With Me by Aobami Adebayo, and this is out from Knopf. This book has been high up on my list since the Bailey's long list came out. I've been waiting for this to come out. This and The Power um, coming out much later than they really, I, I really wanted them to. I heard about The Power, it's coming out in October. I heard about that one at Christmas last year. I also heard about this one coming out months ago. I don't even know anymore. But um, I was sent an early copy by Knopf. Thank you so much, Knopf. And I love this book so much. And I keep gushing about it, but it really, it takes a lot of emotional courage to read this book. So sometimes I just need to take a break because it's just so horrible. I keep thinking if my husband did that, he would regret it very quickly. <laughs> Sam watches these videos. <laughs> but you know, you think that, but like we're not in her circumstances. And what I think that, um, so far, what I think Adebayo does so beautifully is pointing out that the cultural differences and doing something in this culture, such as I would, in my culture, would be totally unacceptable and disrespectful to your family and to your in-laws. And it's just, it's just the way she makes you understand and empathize with a culture that is totally not your own, where polygamy is still a thing, um, it's just fantastic. I just love it so far, and I probably will continue to love it. So just stay tuned, and I probably will be talking about this in the first half of my August wrap-up. 
So the last book I want to talk about is The Heart's Invisible Furies uh, by John Boyne. It's out from Hogarth. This comes out the 22nd. Or if you're like me and you have Book of the Month, you ordered it early. Um, so Liberty Hardy recommended this book um, with passion and fury and normally she does thrillers and mysteries and things or she does giant saga type books which is I I really connect with her on that level she and I both love bark skins it's awesome so this one's about Cyril Avery and it's an I sort of about this Irish guy who's he's like adopted and then it covers like a long period of time in his life and it just has so much in it so I would highly recommend going and checking that out on Book of the Month to see her essay and Liberty's recommendation of this book because I can't. But what I really was the clincher for me was this guy wrote The Boy in Striped Pajamas, which at the time that I read it, I wasn't really keeping track as much because I was still in school and had no life. But yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pick up what this guy writes next. Of course. Of course I am. Anyway, Dylan has just brought a toy up and that is the end of all the books, the 10 books that I want to recommend. So I'm going to put some extras down in the show notes so you'll definitely want to check that out. I have all the release dates and publishers and all the information down there as well. Definitely check that out. If you've read any of these books or you're interested in them or whatever, just you know, leave comments down below and we will have a lovely conversation about new releases. What books are you looking forward to? Um, what ones am I missing? I'm always looking for new books to put on my giant spreadsheet because of course but yeah, so, oh, almost forgot. So I'm doing a giveaway for my 1,000 subscribers, and I am going to be giving away two ARCs together, one package, one prize, you know, two for one. So Everything is Flammable by Gabrielle Bell, which is a graphic memoir, and then also The Accident Season um, by Maura Fowley Doyle. I'll probably also butcher that because it has the cool little Bronte punctuation. Or a letter anyway so I'm gonna give these two books away and um, the prize is for US residents only but everyone is welcome to participate which basically is just commenting down below and books that I recommended that you have put on your TBR and that you have loved so um, if you're in the US and you would like to get some books from me just comment down below and note where you live in the world but everyone is welcome to participate um, I will do an international giveaway at a later date but I had these and I wanted them to find good homes and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. So that's all for me and I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you.